Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending November 19th. First up, I would like to talk about a show I recommended a while back called Head Rush with Kerry Byron. I don't know if anybody did take the chance to watch some of the show. It's supposed to be directed towards younger kids or teens to get them more interested in science. After watching quite a few episodes, I will have to say I'm not really super pleased with it. It seems to me that for the hour-long show, they take about 80% of the show and they rehash Mythbusters episodes. Not that I'm not a big fan of Mythbusters. I certainly am. And I'm still a big fan of uh, Carrie Byron and all of her efforts to try to knock down the stereotypes of what a science geek really is. But I would have to say with 20% of the material being her actual original material, or, or at least by the writers that write the show, and 80% of it being just a, a rehash of Mythbusters, I would much rather see the show go into a different direction and maybe even cut down from an hour to a half hour show, but have some a little bit more original material, things that are directed towards getting young kids enthusiastic into science. So. That's just my take on that. Um, feel free to share your views in the comments or whatever, but I was just kind of disappointed after recommending that myself. I thought the original idea was pretty good, but to me it basically seemed just like uh, watching the same Mythbusters episodes over again, which you can do several times a week on any kind of cable service or satellite service. Next up, a little bit uh, lighter thing. I uh, sometimes look around for just kind of goofy stories and I love these when I come across a story about stupid laws that are still on the books. Uh, one particular one too, and this is just as a comparison, I'll put the link as usual down below in the description. Um, this one is in Minnesota. This this will give you a list of uh, at least one one stupid law for every state, but I just wanted to compare these two and it, I just I found them kind of amusing. In Minnesota it is illegal to walk across the Minnesota-Wisconsin border with a duck on your head. Now, since it's a law in Minnesota, it must mean that that's walking from Wisconsin to Minnesota, because if you walk from Minnesota to Wisconsin with a duck on your head, it's not illegal in Wisconsin. So did they at some time have a problem with people in Wisconsin putting ducks on their head and walking across into Minnesota? Did that become a real problem? But then let's look at the Wisconsin um, law. They said it's a stupid law, but I would almost disagree with this. This almost uh, makes sense in a way if you know about Wisconsin. Unless a customer orders it specifically, it's against the law in Wisconsin to serve margarine instead of butter at a restaurant. And also Wisconsin is known as the dairy state. Now that kind of makes perfect sense to me, wouldn't you? If you asked for a buttered toast, wouldn't you want butter on your toast unless they specifically told you they didn't want margarine? So it's kind of like the Minnesota people... Um, making out like Wisconsin people are so crazy they walk across the border with ducks on their head and yet Wisconsin's uh, entry into even stupid law kind of at least makes sense to me. But check it out. Um, it is funny laws. Uh, the one that I've come across many times before they have in Maryland here, you cannot swear well inside the city limits of Baltimore. That one I've heard many, many times. But if you want to look at something kind of funny and lighthearted, check this out. It's from bitoffun.com. Next up, a quick holiday gift guide, too, and specifically because of the first item on the gift list. I'd be curious if anybody on this gift list of six possible gadget holiday gifts to give for Christmas 2011. It's the Vizio tablet, and the nice thing about it is it's got built-in GPS, it's got Wi-Fi. It seems to have almost all the basic features you would need in a tablet type of PC, but with a price on the street of around 200 bucks. Now I recently did see, I think they talk about the Kindle Fire in here too, and I did recently see a review of the Kindle Fire, and I think that runs around $200 too, but they lock you in, the people that, that reviewed it say they lock you in to so much of a walled garden with the Kindle Fire that you really can't do a lot of things, for example, even check your Google email or anything like that. So this uh, Vizio tablet seems like a good possibility, at least for uh, $200 if you're not a person that has the kind of budget to be able to afford one of those Apple iPads or whatever. So check that out. That's from ocregister.com and the link will be below. This is a subject I kind of want to talk about and stick with me on this one because it's going a different direction than you may expect. This I read uh, November 18th in the USA Today. The Crystal Cathedral is being bought by the Catholic Church. That's the cathedral in, is it Los Angeles or something? You know, Garden Grove, California. And it was the ministry of Robert Schuller that built the Crystal Cathedral. 
Um, some of you may know him even as if you're a Christian, you probably at least know his name and a little bit about him. He had one of the great sayings too. I really like his one saying, "Tough times never last, but tough people do." So he's pretty notable just for that fact themselves. Uh, I'm not going to get into the TV televangelist thing. That'll be for for another time. But this leads me to another thought. I've always had for for years and years and years. I've thought about this: uh, churches and their um, intended uses. If you live in a community that is of any size, it probably has a lot of churches in there, and most of the churches not being these big mega churches, they're smaller churches, maybe congregations of 150, 200 people. And uh, the same principle goes for other, I'm, I'm not just singling out even the Christian religion, it probably goes for uh, temples, synagogues, things like that. But these buildings are a once a week um, primary use. You see, like in the case of a church, you will see the church's parking lot uh, all day Sunday and into the evening crowded with cars. But then through the rest of the week, except for maybe some rare exceptions, the church's parking lots uh, may be empty. Even if the church maybe on Wednesday nights has a Bible study, you look at it and maybe 90% uh, of the time the building isn't even being used for anything. And just as a science kind of geeky person, I guess I think of these things more than most people do. But I was thinking, wouldn't it be uh, something these places could do, maybe rent, rent it out to a uh, an online college or a uh, one of those, uh, what do they call them, those remote satellite campuses? where you could have students go and sit. I mean, you've already got the pews, you've already got the sound system set up. Uh, maybe a couple of nights a week when the church isn't being used, maybe uh, rent it out to something like that or a club or something, you know, uh, defray some of the cost. Now, I know um, nonprofit organizations along with uh, churches and uh, religious places don't pay the same amount of tax most people do, so it is still quite a bit cheaper, I guess, to own the building and the land. But um, still, just, just the case of efficiency, just... I don't know, something weird I think about when I when I look at things. Uh, I wonder if anybody else has thought about the same thing too or, or has any ideas of uh, maybe a more efficient use than that. In some cases, maybe uh, not even use a church building themselves. I mean, what's wrong with uh, renting space yourself, you know, setting up? I've, there's been some pretty good church services just in a gymnasium setting up folding chairs. So uh, that's another option too to save a lot of money for a, a religious group of any kind. And I want to give you a little bit of update, too, on the uh, neutrinos that travel faster than light. I talked about that before, that uh, an Italian, uh, this comes from some Italian scientists. Well, they've been, they've been testing it in CERN, and this comes from Reuters.com. I guess now, well, let me just read a little bit of it here. Jacques Martino, director of the French National Institute of Nuclear and Particle Physics, who worked on the second experiment, said, while this test is not a full confirmation, it did remove some of the potential errors that may have occurred in the first one. The search is not over, he said. So what they're doing is CERN is running tests to see if it's true that it was the neutrinos were actually traveling faster than light, or was it just experimental error? And as they're running more tests, it seems like the uh, error is not... Uh, the, the biggest possibility is more and more tests are being run. Uh, it seems more and more that it may very well be possible. So while it seems like the search for the Higgs boson, as we're getting more and more tests, seems to be less likely that it even exists in the uh, as an actual particle, it seems more and more likely we may be finding neutrinos actually do, or some neutrinos actually do travel faster than the speed of light. So anyway, that's about it for this week. Be sure and check down below. The very first link is going to be supplemental material. A friend of mine, Navy Thomas 8, actually did a video, um, kind of like I'll, I'll call it a video reply to the TDD report, basically um, just putting some science stuff out there, and I gave him an answer. So if you want a little bit more than what you're listening to now and you want a little bit more science geekiness, click on the link, the first link directly below, and that will take you to a supplemental response video I made to him about science and uh, specifically mostly I was talking about the moon of Jupiter Europa next week because it's going to be Thanksgiving weekend I will be spending that with my family having a great time so <coughs> excuse me there will be no TDD report next week but I hope everybody has a happy Thanksgiving and I will catch you next week <music>